Welcome to Gun News and Reviews. Today we're going to do a much anticipated review of the new Marlins. This one is the 1895 SBL, which stands for Stainless Big Loop Lever. It's the 1895. Long live the lever gun. I'm all over that. Very happy that Ruger has purchased this company. We've been covering this story for well over a year. Not going to tell you how great this gun looks. I'm going to let you see it up close, and that's what the purpose of today's review is mostly going to be about. This is not the traditional what you would think of in terms of old school lever gun. It's got this long Picatinny rail on it, gray laminate stock, and a ghost ring for a sight. It's a little bit different than what you might expect when you think about a lever action, but at the same point in time, this is my opinion of uh, taking a nod to the fact that the lever action is here to stay and it needs to be able to be adaptable and customizable for those folks that want to roll with a lever gun. I expect we'll see some of the more traditional looks coming soon. 150 years since Marlin began business, and they've been through a lot, but they're back. In a lot of ways, it makes sense under Ruger to come back with this type of configuration. Stainless and laminate is a sweet spot for Ruger. They do a real good job using those materials, certainly did on this one. These are being manufactured in Mayoden, North Carolina. These were being manufactured when still under Remington in Huntsville, Alabama. I think they'd been in Kentucky before that. Truckload after truckload of equipment went from Huntsville to Mayoden last year. And uh, so a lot of the original machining, tooling, things of that nature... What we see so far is very impressive. This isn't the only one that's out there. They've got several thousand of them out there. People are liking them. The fact that it's uh, less than one degree today uh, where I'm filming this didn't stop me from getting it outside. That's the best place to show you a firearm like this and that kind of light. You can see it has uh, a ghost ring for the rear sight, this long Picatinny rail, which uh, purists are not going to like. I really like the sight system, though. It's very generous. Uh, the pictures aren't doing it justice. You see this PR, stands for Ruger Produced, a little stamp there on the side instead of JM. And that rear ghost sight is adjustable for both windage and elevation. Taking a look there at the fitment, and you can see that it's uh, nice and even. There's supposed to be a little bit of a gap, but not a lot. Looking at the, uh, the end there, that is threaded. If you want to put something on the end of that. This cross bolt safety is not popular with a lot of guys, especially purists. I myself am a half cock guy, but uh, it is there nonetheless. And you can see how half cock works. You can't pull the trigger in the half cock position, but it's easier to get that hammer back. And on this one, you can't engage the safety unless the hammer's pulled back. So you don't have to worry about going into safety without the, the firearm being in a cock position. Trigger pulls about five and a half pounds. It's very handy. And uh, I wouldn't recommend doing this too often. Uh, it's a heavy enough firearm. Wants to take my wrist off with a little bit, but uh, you got to have fun with these type of things. Speaking of fun, there's a lot of people that don't know anything about firearms that know about this gun because of Jurassic Park. I think it's actually Jurassic World, but apparently these can take down a dinosaur. That's good to know. You're looking here at a 1895 I had that was made when Marlin was owned by Remington. Not very good quality compared to what we're looking at today. Both of these 336s were produced when Marlin was Marlin. One's from the 60s, one's from the 70s. You're looking at a Marlin 39A on top. You can see that it's got a cap that was put on the bottom of where the grip and the butt stock kind of join up. Not so much with the new one. Also, looking at that black dot, that bullseye was kind of a trademark of the old Marlin. Ruger's come back and said, hey, let's put our mark on it and we'll make it red. I think it looks really good. 4570 Government. It's got a magazine that holds six shots. As we said, gray laminate stock, stainless steel. It's polished stainless, and that's easy to see. It's got that higher visibility front optic sight, an adjustable ghost ring on the back, and weighs 7.3 pounds, a compact little guy. Length of pull on that's 13.38 inches. 
the barrel length of 19 inches. It is a cold hammer forged stainless barrel. Manufacturer suggested retail price on these is $1,300. Old Marlin, New Marlin, just taking a look at both of them. I think uh, Ruger has done a good job out of the gate. It was really important to impress, especially with the history that uh, was seen under Remington. Remington was struggling, and henceforth so was Marlin. Good-looking firearm. What's the general action of a lever action like? Well, you're looking at it. There's a spring-fed magazine tube and a piece called the lifter or elevator, and it basically feeds the next round into the chamber. It's all accomplished by moving the lever as well as ejecting the prior spent shell. And here you see the 39A. Pay particular close attention to the amount of travel that bolt needs to make to eject a shell. If you compare a 22 or heck any pistol caliber to a 4570 government, you know there's a lot more work that's got to get done by that lever mechanism. 4570 is not easy to find right now. It's never cheap, but it hits hard. It's a great round. I view it as a 200 yard and in round. Some folks will take it out farther. A lot of people have made comments, hey, let's bring back old Marlin style, deep blued finishes, things of that nature. You just don't see a lot of deep blued finishes from anybody anymore. And I've heard it has to do with EPA standards and things of that nature. But most of the time on hunting rifle these days, you're seeing that kind of duller finish. I think that duller finishes tend to wear better. I think that people are demanding things that are more all weather. I think it's also less expensive to make something out of stainless these days than it is to get into expensive and lengthy hot blowing processes. I could be wrong about that. There are those who are just going to rail on this rail, and uh, I get that. If you're a purist and you're looking for something John Wayne might have carried, you probably don't like the look of this particular production. Like I said, they'll be out, I'm sure, with blued and walnut versions. Here you're looking at the threaded barrel, it has this nice polished stainless cap that it comes with. I'm not going to put a silencer on this thing, muzzle brake, but there's folks that definitely will want to. You can see that the bolt is fluted, which eliminates some of the surface area on the travel. Smart idea. What are they coming out with next? Well, on the website, you see the 336. It says it's not in production. Same thing with the 1894. But I think both of those are going to become in the very near future. Can't tell you how thrilled I am to see this brand putting out new firearms. Long live the lever gun is right. An American-made product. Henry's also manufactured solely in the U.S. like Ruger's and like this guy. Shooting video of course to come when weather allows. And that can happen soon enough. For more gun news and reviews, please like and subscribe.